Hey designers, welcome to another episode of How to Draw Cars. My name is Michael, and today we're going to do something that I don't think I've ever seen anybody do on YouTube or the internet regarding car design. And my question to you is, what are you drawing? We're going to get into it in just a second. But before we get started, if you're looking to take your work to the next level, be sure to check out the courses on Udemy and the tailored course program at howtodrawcars.net. The links are in the description. So what is it that I mean when I ask you, what are you drawing? Grab a pencil, grab some paper, and follow along, and we'll get to the answer. The reason we draw as car designers is because we need to show the world our ideas. So in essence, our drawings are representations of our design ideas. I work with a lot of students who show me their design drawings, and I'll ask them, what is this line? and they don't have an answer. You don't want to be that guy or girl. So in this video, I want to go over several of the potential design ideas that your lines in your drawings can represent. So as you can see, I am doing the silhouette and I've got the front center line, I've got my belt line, and I've got my center line of my roof. But what's missing is any descriptive body side lines. So here I'm going to put in a line in my body side. What does that line represent? What is it? In sculpture, in the clay, in the surface. I'm adding a sill line here. What does that line represent? In your mind's eye, you should know one way or another, you should have some idea of what is going on in the body side. What do these lines represent when you go to show them to somebody else? I'll add two more lines. What are these lines representing? Again, they're abstractions, but they're your abstractions. And as the designer, you should know what they're doing, why they're there, what their function is. So let's look more closely at what these things could be. So let's look at the first example of what a line on a body side could be. So I've got my silhouette and I draw my first line on my body side. What is that line? In this case, the line is a break in the surface. It's a change of plane. The body side surface comes off the belt line at a certain angle. This catches the light in a certain way. When that angle changes, a line is created along the body side. The light gets caught in a different way. It changes the color and the quality of the light, and your eye perceives it as a line. So our first example of what we're drawing when we draw lines on our body side is a change in plane. Okay, so let's look at another example of what the lines in our body side can be. So here is another silhouette, and I draw a line on the body side. What is it? Is it a change of plane again? No, it's something new. It's something else. In this instance, it's a hole in the body side. So the lines are still lines on the page, but the difference is with this, I'm representing an inlet, a vent, a way to take in air for the engine, and I bring in some darker tone to help get that idea across. So we've got a change in plane, and now we have lines on the body side that can be equal to a hole in the body side. So let's look at a third example. Here's my silhouette. I draw my first body side line. What is it? Is it a change in plane? Is it a vent? Or is it something else? Hopefully by this point in the video, you're starting to think, yeah, how many of these are there? What's going on? What am I drawing? And what I'm drawing here is both the trailing edge of a surface and the leading edge of another surface. So here's the trailing edge of the first surface of the first form, and here's the leading edge of the second form. Now, where are they forms? They're forms in my mind's eye. 
Here's the first form, here's the second form, and then there's a third form that links the two together. So I've got three forms interlocking in this one design with these two lines. They're connected. But if someone who didn't know what I was trying to do saw these, this drawing, they would just see those two lines. So the only place this design exists is in my mind's eye. As I further develop it with different views and adding color and doing renderings, the design will come to fruition and the full idea will be expressed. Okay, let's try a fourth one. Here's my silhouette. I draw an arcing line from my front wheel opening to my rear wheel opening. What does that line represent? Then I put another line over my rear fender that comes back towards the fender opening and it connects with my first arcing line. What does that line represent? As the designer, you should know. And you may have noticed that the last three silhouettes that we started with were all pretty much the same shape. And yet, the lines that we draw inside that silhouette are radically different in their meaning. They're just lines on the page, but they mean radically different things to the designers that created them. And you should be thinking about the lines that you draw inside your silhouettes the same way. What is it that you're drawing, right? Back to the original question. In this case, the lines represent the intersection of two separate forms and the light and the shadow that is created when this happens. This is much more sophisticated than the original plane change that we looked at in the first example. So this one's a little bit less glamorous, though necessary if you want to get in and out of any vehicle that you design. So here I am with my silhouette and I'm adding my body side lines in. And again, what do these represent? As you look across the surface, you'll see that there's a certain rhythm that these diagonals start to establish across the surface of the car. And there's a lot of value in that. There's something to be gleaned from that, that this idea of closures and analogous relationships have value. So what these lines represent on this particular vehicle are the cut lines, the shut faces, how the car is assembled, and how the doors open. So they're the door opening lines and how the fenders and bumpers and different parts that make up the surface of the car, the panels of the car, how they fit together. And so this is another thing to think about as a designer when you're designing your car how is it going to get put together and can I do something creative with those lines that I absolutely have to have in order to assemble the car in the first place. So hopefully by now the idea of this video and the thinking that I want you to start to engage in is becoming more clear to you. If you do like the content of the video please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any ideas for future videos please let me know that in the comments as well. So are there any other body side lines on our cars that we design and that we draw that I haven't included? Let's take a look. So here's two examples of areas that started out as lines on the drawing and became separate parts. Here's an example of lines on a drawing that became a blacked out or graphic area. And lastly, we have a car that seems to have all of the elements that we've mentioned in this video and maybe, maybe some additional ones. We have a change in plane on the rear quarter. We have a hole or a perforation in the surface. We have a leading edge and trailing edge on the body side. We have an intersection of forms creating highlights and shadows. We have panel gaps and door cuts creating additional line work. We have separate parts and lastly we have graphic or blacked out areas of the car. Now this is just a small sample of what the lines on our drawings can mean. Your job is to invent new ones and the only way you can do that is to first understand that the lines that you draw in your drawings have meaning. 
They can solve problems. They can add drama. They can add balance to your forms. And that meaning comes from you. You are the creator of your own ideas. Be creative, be bold, be fearless, and I'll see you in the next video.